Hi, I'm Dave Casper. Welcome to another My First Implant segment. Our guest today is Dr. Jerry Nisnik, who I believe needs no further introduction. Jerry, you first started with implants back in 1971, so I thought it would be fun today to have you tell us the story of why you got started, how you picked your first patient, what kind of case was it, what made you decide to take the plunge? Well, I was a prosthodontist uh, uh, in San Fernando Valley treating a lot of edentulous patients, and there's just a limit to what you could accomplish in stabilizing a lower denture, no matter how well you took the impression. I said, well, I guess I better learn how to do implants. Uh, so I started taking courses. I went uh, about every other year to New York and spent a week in Dr. Linkow's office, joined the American Academy of Implant Dentistry, and uh, uh, started uh, doing uh, blade implants and subperiosteal implants. Uh, my first uh, blade case was um, uh, very uh, adventurous. It was a totally dentulous uh, case and I was going to put four blades in and seat a temporary restoration on it. I'd watched Linkow do this. Uh, These are one piece, the blades at the time were one yeah, piece. Yeah, one piece with a post on it and you had to immediately place the implants and, and um, uh, make the temporary to splint them together. Uh, the problem was that the temporaries were not that solid Maybe, maybe one of the temporaries fractured, an implant got overloaded, and one of the four implants had to be removed. Now I was down to three implants and uh, couldn't temporize it very well, and then the next implant failed. And then I said, well, you know, I got to take out these implants, and I'll go with a subperiosteal implant. Uh, taking out one of those implants, it had osseointegrated. I had to block section to get that implant out. So I learned about osseointegration back in 1972 or three. By default. Uh, by default, yes. Uh, anyways, I got all those implants out and then I made the, a subperiosteal for the patient. The key was that I didn't charge these patients. If I, if during my learning phase, it was uh, really a lot of cases that I did uh, just to get the experience and the patients went along with it because I said, I'm not charging you, it's a new procedure, it can really help you. Uh, and uh, it really took me a couple of years before I start charging for dental implants and then I stuck just to uh, blade implants as a distal abutment to a three unit bridge in the posterior, never did any blades in the maxilla and never did any subperiosteals in the maxilla. So it was uh, blades and then some loose screws and what was kind of interesting is that I was ready to give up implants. By 1978, my wife says, just go to one more meeting. You never know what you'll find. And what was interesting is that uh, Sterngold was selling the Zest anchors at that uh, um, time. And Max Zest had developed a screw that would take his Zest attachment. And I thought, wow, what a great idea. Because the zest attachment back then was just for teeth. Yeah, just for teeth. What a great idea. But he couldn't get anybody to place these things. And they were looking for 10 dentists to place 10 implants. I got back to California. I called Max Zest. I said, look, you don't need 10 dentists placing 10 implants. You need me placing 100 implants. And I had the patience that I could do it. This is like on a Monday. Tuesday, uh, I said, come up here Friday. Bring the implants and the attachments. He drove up on Friday. I had three patients lined up and I placed uh, uh, um, implants, his solid screw with the zest attachment uh, in the anterior and placed a number of those over the next year and really learned how to get the implant to attach firmly to bone by not overheating the bone, by burying them. And that really led me into the core vent system uh, but I got my start from a lot of dentists that were very helpful to me in the beginning. Thanks for sharing your story. Very Thank interesting. You.